Good afternoon, everyone. Ken Angst, Hope Properties MV, the Angst Real Estate team. Hope everyone is doing well out there. Uh, this week, we're actually talking about preliminary title reports. And fortunately, I got some time from Erin Schiller. She's the uh, president, correct me if I'm wrong, Erin, uh, of Tycor Title, or vice president. Vice president, yes. Vice president, Tycor Title here in uh, Reno, Nevada. And she's kind of come in and she's going to talk about preliminary title reports just because a lot of people don't understand them, when, particularly when we have buyers on escrow. They get a preliminary title report a couple days after they submit an offer and they're kind of curious on what is the preliminary title report and why do we have to have it? So Aaron, if you can kind of talk about a little bit about yourself, how long you've been in the business, what's your role at Tycor, and then we can kind of jump in and talk about um, preliminary title reports. Well, thank you. And thanks, Ken, for uh, inviting me to be on this. I'm very excited. Uh, my role at the company, I'm vice president of regional sales. I oversee the sales and marketing initiatives for Northern Nevada. Um, I'm also the education director, so we have a lot of education and classes that we provide our real estate partners. Uh, so I oversee all of that for the state of Nevada, actually, for our parent company, Fidelity National Title Group. So um, those are I, I do have a lot of hats, um, but I, I love like what it. I do. <laughs> um, I've been in the business 32 years. Um, actually, I could actually say 42 years because my parents were real estate agents um, when I was eight years old. So I've grown up in the business my whole life, but I preferred um, the title and escrow side of it because I felt like I really wanted to help the real estate community and also be an educator. Um, and it just kind of been part of my business for 30 years so love Great. love what i do and love talking about topics that have are relevant like preliminary title reports for sure great so is so refresh my memory is tycor title national just just nevada or how where are you guys based out of or so tycor title actually has been around and insuring title insurance since 1892 we're actually one of the oldest title companies in the u.s and we're owned by Fidelity National Financial. Fidelity is the largest title insurance provider in the United States. Um, and we take up the majority of the market share in the United States. So we, our parent company is amazing. We have companies that are our family of companies like Fidelity Title, Chicago Title, Lawyers Title. Uh, we've got offices throughout the U.S. that are named differently. Maybe, um, you know, we have Chelsea Title or Alamo Title. So they're all part of our family of companies. So if you're doing transactions in other states, you actually are probably working with a Fidelity branded company. Wow. Well, fantastic. Yeah. I didn't actually know that. So yeah, uh, great to know. So um, let's jump into our topic. So our buyers and sellers get into contract, get an escrow. And the contract says, hey, within so many days, you're going to get a preliminary title report from your title company. What is that? And why do we have to do it? And who, how does it protect people? And it just kind of goes over and you can kind of review that. That would help, I think, all of us out and figure out what's going on. Yeah, you know, um, preliminary title reports um, are a, it's actually a, uh, a report that we provide for the commitment of title insurance. So our role is to do this report, but eventually provide title insurance on that specific property. And one of the things that we do is we search um, on the, about the property itself through the legal description, APN, and then we also search the seller and the buyer. So we will actually do research on what may be uh, recorded against someone or the actual property itself. And so if anything is recorded or uh, involved in that, that transaction or that property, we're going to display that and put that in that preliminary title report. Now, if there are things on that report, uh, for example, child support lien, uh, IRS tax liens, a mechanics lien, uh, bankruptcy, uh, there's a variety of things that might show up that we may need to clean up and clear up prior to the new buyer purchasing that property. Okay. And so that's the whole purpose of a prelim is to disclose everything that's on that property and then clear it up before we issue a title insurance policy to that buyer. Our whole role is to 
provide uh, a, a free and clear property to that buyer so that you know there's no issues that come up later down the road. So once they close on the property, then they're not going to be, and that's what title insurance is for, right? It will cover uh, liens that come up after the fact. And I've seen like landscape liens, for example, I've seen those way back in 2008 and nine. Right. There was a whole bunch that came in after the fact of people closing the property and the landscaper filed the lien. So that's something that title insurance would cover, correct? Yes, and we have um, two title insurance policies that we issue. One is a standard policy and the other is a homeowner's policy. And a lot of people go, well, what is it? What's the coverage? Well, there's some extra coverage. Uh, it's only 10% of the base rate. So for example, if the owner's policy is $870, they're only paying $87 um, at one time fee to have that extra policy, which covers post-closing forgery, and fraud and things like that, or things that might be uncovered later. Uh, so, but even the standard policy that's already uh, part of our uh, regular title fees covers a lot. And, and you know, that's the thing is a lot of times our, the consumer doesn't really understand what title insurers do. I think the perception out there, Ken, is that they think that we're that place that you sign your papers at. But right. really, the, the role of our company is to protect the land that they own. And that's what we have to do. And so we don't want to issue a policy where there's some issues on that property that could come up later. Uh, so we have to resolve those during escrow process. So, mm -hmm. for example, recently I had a client who... Uh, uh, who had an IRS tax lien they didn't talk about, didn't disclose that to their, to their agent, and it showed up on our title policy. And guess yeah. what? Because of COVID, um, the, it's really difficult to get a hold of entities like the IRS right now and try and get that information back and forth to get that resolved. And so a lot of times we have to clear that up um, as well as any other issues that might pop up. So, and with, during this time, it's been very difficult because everybody's really slow in their processes, right? We're not getting stuff as quick as we normally do. So now do you guys have a policy? Cause for example, one thing that came up is uh, some of our people get married. So going in like five years ago, they were kind of um, together as a couple, not necessarily married or anything. And then this year they get married. Can they be added to title or does that void title or how does that all work with title insurance once like a, a person gets married or, you know, does it void it if you, can you kind of go into that? That's kind of a confusing. Yeah. Thing. You know, this, um, let's just say that uh, if you add someone to title, say that, you know, it's uh, John Smith. Okay, John Smith purchases the property and um, he's on the deed and then also on the deed of trust because he got the loan. Um, if we later down the road, once he wants to add his wife or his girlfriend or someone else on the, or partner uh, on the property, um, there is a, in a deed of trust a do on sale clause. And there is a concern of adding someone because when we issued a title policy, we issued it to him and to the lender on that deed of trust. We didn't issue it to the person that we're adding. A lot of times people want to add people because, oh, I want to add my girlfriend or my husband or my wife because I want them to be a part of it, you know? Yeah. And really what we have to realize is this state of Nevada is a community property state. So as soon as you say, I do, you have rights. So you really... A lot of times um, what we do see is if they did want to add someone, we do recommend that they talk to an attorney first thing mm -hmm. um, and talk to a real estate attorney that knows what they're doing, that they are professional. They, um, they, they, will, they can add um, that person. The, the problem with Tycor, any title company, adding someone can um, actually make that lender's policy uh, null. And so we don't want to do that, but someone else, they could add someone to title, but we prefer that an attorney do, does it. Also think about trust, you know, do you want to, you know, are you adding someone? Have you thought about getting a trust? You know, that would be something, get within a trust attorney. Uh, Ken, that might be another um, presentation you might want to have is talk to a trust attorney about things that come up during uh, transactions like this, because, 
I've been recommending a lot of people to get trust because of Absolutely. just how title issues come popping up and yeah. everything. Yeah. Yeah. We had uh, our attorney actually specifically mentioned this was a, about a month ago that when he sends in the transfer the property into the trust and all that, he sends a note to the lenders saying, we're, this is what we're doing. Do you have a problem with it? Because we don't want to cause the note to come due. Yes, exactly. And a lot of people don't know that. So they, you know, we see on one of the things we're talking about preliminary title reports, one of the things we see is, and we, we saw a lot of this during the, the foreclosure crisis, you know, there's a lot of people adding and taking people off and adding people and a lot of stuff. And now we're cleaning that up. So now that people are selling their house after getting through this financial crisis and things are much better, um, we're actually kind of cleaning up some title issues where people were doing things like that. So, you know, before anyone goes forward with adding or taking people off, just make sure to reach out to an attorney that, that might give, a, give some advice. And also a CPA could right. cause some issues on a, on a tax Absolutely. ramifications if you do that. Absolutely. So... All right, well, we're gonna kind of cut it there, Aaron, just because uh, we wanna keep the, everyone engaged. Yes. Uh, I'm gonna do probably, if you don't mind, maybe in a couple months, we'll have you back on another topic about title. I know that um, you're one of the authorities on title and we appreciate, you know, from a real estate perspective, we, I go to a lot of your guys' classes and I really enjoy all the stuff, so. Thank you, thank you. You guys, so. Thanks for having me and looking forward to the next time. Okay, great. Well, uh, if you guys have any questions, what we'll do um, is put Aaron's information on the screen. We'll put your email and your phone number um, and your website, and, uh, and they can follow up with you if they have any questions about their title insurance. Absolutely. Feel and free. That being said, uh, that's it for this week. Everyone enjoy this nice weather. It's supposed to be really nice this weekend, so hopefully everyone can get to the lake or maybe that place where Aaron's behind her. Uh, and uh, get some waves in. And then uh, what we'll do is we'll talk to everyone next week. You guys have a good weekend. Thanks. Thanks, Aaron. Thank you. Appreciate it.